I'm here presenting a question basically that how can the technical infrastructure support the processes that have been discussed in the previous day and in the all the working groups uh, connected in the million genomes initiative so I'm working in one of the working groups working group five we have 59 members at the moment from 22 countries so what I'm presenting here is hopefully a consensus because we have had meetings over two years and trying to build uh, the content of this presentation in this expert group. We are not resourced that much. So basically we have the beyond 1 million genomes coordination and support action and all the other contributions that we are sort of leading at the moment come from the countries themselves. So this is a voluntary work at the moment. We are not that thoroughly resourced through the Beyond uh, Million Genomes Initiative. So what we are still doing is, is pretty much being on the planning phase and trying to find a consensus what we would like to build as a technical infrastructure so that we could have all the processes of secure data management on top of that. So I'm trying to present my whole working group here. It's not only my content. So I'm speaking about Million Genomes Initiative and the Roadmap goals it has set, which are pretty ambitious. So by the end of 22, we should have a pretty clear view of what should be built. Uh, so we, we are defining the infrastructure uh, blueprint. That's our job. And uh, we should set, give instructions to the national data hubs how to build and be interoperable and be able to do this cross-border genomic data services and uh, what we're doing now at the moment is is trying to figure out what sort of uh, data queries would actually be useful for the healthcare setting so these are all in the scope of the million genomes initiative and uh, declaration that that we are we are together working on so the scope is really large so my feeling with my 20 years of like a scientific it service uh, building is that the scope is really really why? So we have rare diseases, oncology, cancer, common complex diseases, infectious diseases. So all these data areas have different data models, and we, we should put together this collective ethical and legal framework and support that with the technical infrastructure. So this is one of the things that uh, the technical infrastructure doesn't exist in isolation of the other factors where you actually would use the data and what the regulator regulations actually allow us to do. So we need to connect a lot of dots before we build anything. And this is why the planning phase, like two years of discussions, tea and biscuits <laughs> consumed. So I mean, this is this has taken some time to get to this point. So this is just to emphasize that this is one of the working groups and it's not working in isolation. So we have started to emphasize work with the ALC group in particular, and we are extending to the use cases uh, at the moment. So what actually is infrastructure for million genomes? So this is the question that I asked myself and uh, colleagues at first. So basically the mandate is really broad. We're expected to build a distributed federated structure that is secure, interoperable, privacy respecting framework and access governance. So it's clear that these are not technical things. These are processes and uh, we need to uh, put some more concrete actions behind each one of these big words. So secure enough. So what, what does it mean? So is it 99.9% .9 technically and the rest is contracts? We need to define these all very well. Otherwise we are not heading the di di directions that uh, are sort of formed the consensus of the signatory member states. We, we re wrote a scoping paper in the beginning of this year that I have linked to this slide that sort of uh, tries to outline what we think is within the scope of the technical infrastructure building. And we are currently working really hard with the voluntary resources in order to have a tangible end-to-end -end proof of concept by the end of this year within the working group and the Beyond One Million Genomes project in order to sort of uh, criticize constructively is something that we are planning. Uh, is it making sense in the, 
in the context of the whole initiative. So I want to underline interoperability. Um, so we are focusing on things like uh, service architectures, interfaces, and uh, what sort of platforms could support the different data analysis people would like to carry on to the data that becomes available and trying to link the organizations that have the capacities to do this. And this will feed in uh, to the other groups like the legal group. So, so it's not, I mean, it doesn't make sense to make regulation that you cannot enforce uh, in a constructive way. So we need to find somehow iteratively what is the sweet spot here. Technology cannot solve everything by itself. Uh, so we, did during the last year chop the word infrastructure into five bigger functionalities or, or smaller <clears throat> sorry smaller functionalities of what kind of things we should be able to be uh, do with the, with the infrastructure and those are data discoverability uh, data reception uh, storage the physical storages and the interfaces data access management systems in support of the data access authorities like the fin data that you saw yesterday and processing i.e the computing so software on top of the computing machinery so these five functionalities uh, could be produced by national organizations or centralized organizations or regional organizations and they need to form this eu uh, level interoperable framework. So we have analyzed different scenarios. So what we are assuming is that the million genomes will happen between the distributed national data hubs. So it seemed like the, the data sharing into one single place in Europe was out of scope from political and other reasons. So we're looking at an interoperable distributed infrastructure solution. So we cannot go into the countries and tell how they should organize their genome center. But what we can do is that we can try to suggest the blueprint for how to make the data centers or data hubs in each one of the countries more interoperable. And within this working group five, since we have contacts to most of the countries, we have a way of like communicating what is happening in each country. So this puts the functionalities in another uh, kind of a picture and the dashed line means that where we see the greatest weaknesses where development must take place so how do we receive data how do we how do we store that and how do we support the data access uh, mechanism data access mechanism with the tools that that are uh, available like for identifying the data users and uh, and uh, expressing in a machine readable way what sort of uh, access uh, rights have been granted for them so each one of the member states, and I, I think this is one of my main messages, they, they should really feel that if we build these data hubs that are connected in the million genomes data coordination, they, they should be taken care. <laughs> I mean, the governments basically own those services, then and, and, uh, we're, we're trying to figure out what would work. So engagement in the million genomes really demands quite a lot of expert capacity building in, in some of the countries. The countries are at the different starting points in, in building this sort of a data management infrastructure. So this is an example from Finland, uh, what we think we could uh, put in place. So all these arrows and boxes there, or circles, ellipses, and, and persons, they all are a symbol of a underlying process or stakeholder group who would uh, need to work with a data hub like a genome center that holds a genome database and we we again i'm referring to the fin data example yesterday so basically we need to support different types of data controllers and their interactions with the data producers and the eventual data users with the processes produced by a data hub so this is a picture from a from a architecture work being made at Finland to prepare for a genome center and the functionalities that would be available there. And this maps to the bigger level functionalities that I showed. I'll tell a little bit more about these functionalities. I'll just go quickly through them, but I, I wrote them out just to provide a, a information about what, what this means. So data discoverability, I bring it first because 
if we can't find the data that we would need to share in the in the infrastructure it doesn't really exist so we, we have made a catalog of genome data sets but there's a, a, a maturity that needs to be assessed that how well can we discover this with uh, computational discovery tools so we need to have descriptive public metadata about the data sets that would be uh, uh, brought into the data coordination and we need to link these two so we're not sharing for discoverability anything that is sensitive we're sharing public metadata points that would be part of data sets that would then be subject to the data access controls so this is what we mean with data discoverability so data this reception so again uh, we are thinking of a distributed infrastructure uh, so in order to receive a data to be part of the virtual 1 million genomes cohort, we need to describe it, including the discoverability part, but receiving doesn't mean uploading. It means that we need to have interfaces to access the data and the associated clinical phenotype metadata and adhere to principles and standards that we choose together. So it doesn't mean that we upload. Reception means that we can logically uh, identify where the data is being shared and what are the mechanisms to ask for more detailed access. And the actual physical infrastructure. So this is maybe one of the things that we're assuming that we will receive capacities we need for storing large files and sensitive files from the national and the European e-infrastructure capacities. So what we need to do is to provide a specification for the security requirements for these infrastructures. So this is maybe one of the question marks that how do we actually uh, uh, set this up for each one of the data hubs. The data access management tools, uh, as I said, this is perhaps one of the things where technology and the software tools are still uh, being developed quite intensively in different uh, programs. What we have discussed with the ethical and legal group, uh, who is pretty driving the trade of data privacy and protection principles in the initiative, is that uh, we need a coordinated view of how to reach the data custodians and what are the agreements needed for the data use in the, in the intended setting in the million genomes for healthcare or research purposes. So we, we have planned different uh, functionalities underlying this functionality like uh, supporting user applications for data use uh, communicating the data access authorizations in a, in a distributed infrastructure towards for instance the, the, the cloud infrastructures that are secure enough and then of course the processing or the computing part so uh, this is maybe something that is most uh, like uh, engagement intensive because the infrastructures are large and there's a lot of expertise there but we need to reach out with the use cases we have that can we support them with uh, with the present local and uh, uh, european high performance and cloud computing infrastructures all right so what where we are now is really that we have put these all functionalities and international standards into a architecture that would support the rare diseases use case. And the remaining uh, minutes that I have, I'll, I'll talk a little bit what we are going to do next. So this is quite a technical slide already, but it shows that we have made technology choices for the purpose of this proof principle that we are, we are working hard with, with the volunteering countries at the moment. And I would be happy to elaborate any of these boxes, but, but they are long stories by themselves. But these form now the, the five functionalities in, in yellow boxes in the, in the top in, in, in practical terms in each one of these data hubs. So what Red Disease is want to see uh, being answered from the data uh, are something that uh, you would like to diagnose a patient waiting for a classification of why, why is there a molecular reason why, why a certain uh, rare disease is, has been diagnosed? We need to, uh, we need to, uh, so Bruno Dalla Piccola, who is, who is leading the working group five, has expressed this 
wishes to us. And we need to translate all the way from the data availability through the software tools in order to be answer questions like that with the infrastructure. So that is our ambition. And this is what we hope we will show in the end of this year. And then when we see all the components that we have integrated together, it is easier to do things like uh, uh, mapping if the data is protected enough. So we're starting with the synthetic, uh, synthetic data, so non-sensitive data, but we are trying to answer these questions with all the different technical components we would integrate on the infrastructure. Once we have this together, it enables us to do a data protection impact assessment as required in the GDPR. Uh, it is hard to do this without having something concrete, but this is basically where we're aiming at. Uh, so to recap, next steps for the infrastructure. So we want to make a full workflow uh, by the end of this year and then make a data protection impact assessment. And we'll use this to reach out from the infrastructure to the LC group and the rare diseases use case. What we're building should be agnostic so that we can apply the same processes also to the other use cases. We have a vision that we could leverage uh, some of the large computing systems existing in, in Europe, but we need to make a security specification. And even though we are starting with the synthetic data, so non-sensitive non data, we still need to be, make sure that we understand what we're doing on the technical side. This has to be complemented with, uh, with the terms of use that come from the legal perspectives. Uh, million genomes data is not the only data type that people will want to access. So there's a lot of other uh, data types that researchers will want to use when interpreting the genomic data. So we just have to keep this in mind, even though it's out of scope. But there are organizations like Elixir working on the interoperability of the semantic layer of uh, health and biological data in, in Europe. So. We are focusing on the access control data and there are solutions coming from the research sector that could be applied also on the healthcare data management side. But going across this, this border requires contracting. So what I really would like to uh, stop and emphasize and ask from the government is to, to think about this government level collaboration. So if we want to reach an interoperable infrastructure. We have a lot of good solutions from both the research and the healthcare, healthcare side. And this Million Genomes Initiatives gives us the uh, opportunity to connect. But of course, we cannot do this from the technical side alone. We need, we need the con government support. And in Finland, this has been very proactive so far. So I, I think by the end of the year, we'll be wiser and uh, we have some decisions coming up in the, in the, in the, in the turn of the 21-22. So I will stop there. Sorry, I took a few more minutes than I, I intended, but, but I hope I gave you an overview of where the technical work is going in the Million, million Genomes Initiative. Thank you very much. Thank you.